Wi-Fi. It should work anywhere in your home. Introducing Boost, the cutting edge Wi-Fi solution that makes dead zones history. Boost starts with a dual band modem and router with greater range than ever. Access points can be added anywhere there's a cable outlet to create more wired connections and stronger Wi-Fi to power all your family's devices in all the places you love to live. Learn more at eaglecom.net or call today and add the power of Boost to your Wi-Fi. Eagle Community Television presents Community Connection with your host, Mike Cooper. Welcome again to our Community Connection from Eagle Studios. And thanks again, as always, to our producer and editor of our series, Brandon Cooley. Today, the Fort Hayes State University Assistant Vice President for Student Affairs in charge of enrollment management and retention. It's quite a title for our <laughs> community connection. Dr. Dennis King, who I found out has an association with our producer editor, Brandon Cooley. Yep, a former student, as he was saying earlier. Uh, I taught him a lot of things not to do, and so <laughs> he's, that's why he can do these fine productions today. Well, that's the question is, how's he doing? We'll have to grade him after okay. the program, I guess, Dr. King. Let's talk about this new Tiger Early Alert. Now, originally it was called PAR, mm -hmm. um, and there have been some changes since then. So go through the process with us. What is it? So um, probably about three or four years ago, uh, we started looking at it. Uh, uh, myself, uh, Dr. Chris Crawford, and a couple other people started looking at a analytic system to help us predict the success of students um, and also to give us information about how certain students were performing in each program. Um, so we can pick out and we can say, here's all the characteristics in your background, here's you know, similar students from the last 10 years, and then help us get them on a path to success. And maybe one student needs to go biology for a general education course, and the other student needs to go chemistry, and just to start to look at how we can predict student success um, on, a, uh, on a data uh, scale and of course then adding the human element into mm -hmm. it afterwards but at least having the data to make some of those decisions and putting it at everyone's fingertips so we've looked through a, a, a series of different products and um, you know they can be quite expensive um, mm -hmm. as you can imagine and we came across this one that was really founded as a, a, a grant and more as a a community type um, activity. So there were uh, several schools that got involved and started putting it together with a grant and we kind of came in right at the end of the grant to, to license this product. And at that time it was called PAR, which was Predictive Analytics Framework for all of students um, at a university. And it was and it, it was and is a great product. Um, but of course, as happens when you find a great product, you mm -hmm. license it and right after you license it, they decide that, you know, somebody else decides that it's so good we want to buy it. <laughs> uh -huh. And so fortunately for us, there was a company called Hobson's that, that purchased um, PAR and then rolled it into a system that we already have. So we, we've had a system on campus for about five years now that's called um, it's Starfish. Um, so Hobson's owns Starfish, and Starfish mm -hmm. is an early alert system. So if, and not that, this, not that this ever happened, but if Brandon would get in trouble in the class, I could get in and say, you know, he's not, you know, just a little thing to say he's not showing up or I have a general concern or, you know, maybe even um, he, he's, he's down and, you know, uh, mm -hmm. it looks like there's something else going on. Mm -hmm. And those reports, um, those reports, he would get an email that says, hey, there's a concern, come talk to your professor. And then we would also get those um, in our area and we would reach out uh, to that student and say, you know, how can we help you? And um, uh, so th that's kind of an early alert side of things. So it's real time as the classes are going on. Well, Hobson's added this predictive, so it's before the classes even start. We can start looking at the advising level again and, and within a department. And we can drill down to an individual student and say, here's the characteristics of this individual student and here's where they'll be successful or we have no concerns about this student going forward, um, we can go up to like a program level and say, uh, you know, in uh, criminal justice, you know, okay. here are all the courses that students take and it presents it in kind of a, a, a sector map, if, if you will, if you've done stock market <laughs> type <laughs> stuff. And you can see, you know, here's where the majority of students take, 
uh, their general education classes or classes within the major, and you can look at their success in those classes. Mm -hmm. And then again, you could drill down to the individual student, but you could see where, you know, perhaps there's a route that students are taking that uh, is a roadblock course um, or some, a weeder course, <laughs> some, some programs would call it. And then we can analyze why, why that is the case. Um, and we can do that every program on campus and every class on campus. So we can, we can look at, and um, you know, one of, the, one of the examples that we have pulled up, or a couple that we've pulled up, is we find that um, students in, um, I'll leave majors out of it for now, but students in one major um, have a hard time in biology, and students in another major have a hard time in physics. So what we will do with that information when we present it to the departments um, is, okay, let's look at the time of the courses and let's look at the schedule and maybe we just need to move, you know, how do we get those physics students in their general education classes going in the right major and vice versa? And so where you have the option to do one science or another, um, we can get them in the, uh, the science where they have the best chance of success. And generally that best chance of success also means that it's related to their field of study and that it will help them in the future as they go out and get and you know, and, and uh, pursue their career down the road. Amazing. Sounds like it enhances the human element, which has always been present with faculty and staff at Fort Hays State. Right. You know, and that, that's one of the things when we, when we talk to students or we survey students with some of our assessment data, um, we have outside companies that do this as well, is that we, you know, student services and the interaction and engagement of the faculty and staff of Fort Hays uh, ranks among the top in the country. Mm -hmm. um, and we're always excited to hear, you know, to hear that type of information. And that's an important piece of this as well. While this gives us the data, and you know what, I'm a prime example. I mean, I, you know, I, I, if you would have run my stuff, <laughs> you would have run my background uh, through uh, through the analytics. They would have, you know, they would have probably said, "Just go home now." <laughs> um, but um, you know that there's a human element that comes into play with this as well. This gives mm -hmm. us data. This gives us areas of success. This gives us where other people were successful. But it's still, you know, there's a reason we call it advising. It's not mm -hmm. dictatorship, and this is what you're going to do. It's working with the student and working with the individual. To get, um, to get them on the right path. And in some cases, you know what, maybe it's a little, you know, a little push and a little nudge to, hey, you've got to start working harder. And that's mm -hmm. all it takes. And they have one, you know, success one place, and then that success just continues to go and to go. And if we can know ahead of time, uh, you know, part of the predictive uh, analytics thing is most people, you know, they dislike math and they always want to put it off to the end. But we know that putting it off to the end doesn't make it any easier. It actually makes it harder because you haven't done it for that time. Uh -huh. But on the predictive side of things, if we can say, um, here are characteristics of a student that are going to struggle and get them some help, get them some tutoring before the class starts or when the class starts, as opposed to waiting to week four, week five, week six, we've set that student up for success. Mm -hmm. And then they can work their way, grind their way through the class if that's the, if that's the case. And, you know, another thing we always share is, you know, you, you have to remember, uh, you know, four months of a college is really worth about 12 years of your professional life. And uh -huh. so when you, when you get to that point and you're, gr you're, you're grinding through a class or it's a class that you're, you're struggling in, you know, keep focused. It's only four months and it's going to equal 12 years down the road. Mm -hmm. So um, setting them up for the best success and the, on that pathway is what we want to do. And many of our uh, folks that we visited with on the Connections program have told us that the early intervention mm -hmm. with faculty, staff, and support groups to a student means long-term success to complete and walk across that stage at graduation, Dr. King. Yes, uh, definitely. And that's where the, that early alert system comes in as well. And they're actually called interventions, uh, as, as you <laughs> said. So when we, uh, when we go intervene, some say you know intrusive interventions, <laughs> But if it leads towards student success and it, you know, it's grounded in what they're doing in the classroom or grounded in data that we have, I mean, that's what we want, that's what we want to use the data for and that's what we want to use the information for. And this program's been in place enough for you to see some positive and substantive uh, results from it? Yeah, we, uh, on the early alert side, so the real, the real time side, we, I, I will say we used it fairly effectively in the beginning and then we kind of had a lull where it wasn't used um, as much as it should have been. Mm -hmm. um, with the creation of my position a couple of years ago, the, the system moved in uh, as my responsibility. And so we, we, 
we re-energized, uh, went out and did presentations across campus. Uh, again, are about to do them to all the academic departments again. Um, last year, we had a success rate from fall to spring um, of uh, 74, we retained 74% of the students. And that, you know, we would like it to be higher than that, but what we have to remember is these are 74% of the students that were identified at risk. It's not 74% of the entire student body. Mm -hmm. For those that aren't at risk, you know, we're retaining those at a much higher rate. Uh -huh. um, so we'll be able to run, it's, it was actually 20th day yesterday, so we're cleaning up all of our numbers today, but we'll be able to run some, some data about those that we had for a full year now, those that we had for a half a year, and we're getting, I will say we're getting better with all of the things that we're doing as well. Um, well, even that 74 percent, I've got to think, is probably higher than the average across the United States for like universities. Yeah, um, you know, that's, and that's not a, a, a number that a lot of people share. So uh -huh. we have asked that of, uh, of Hobson's and Starfish before, you know, how are our numbers, where do, they, where do they relate? And we kind of get the, well, they're in the ballpark, or they're, uh -huh. you know, they don't, uh, people don't Whereas always share all the, the overall <laughs> attention rate probably is more of a shared number. I yeah, it is. You know, our freshman mm -hmm. retention rate is, is a standard retention rate that uh, we report to the federal government. It's on our, you know, it's on our website. You know, it's mm -hmm. one of the things we have to do. So, um, has the faculty uh, in general bought into this to be able to use it? Is it enhancing their ability to uh, to teach? Yeah. Now on the. On the early alert side, yes. So we, it took us uh, about two weeks to get it running at the beginning of the semester because of the implementation of ana the analytics, the PAR piece, and mm -hmm. the early alert together. The early, early alert went from, so a year ago spring, um, the, the first spring that we ran it, 276 flags or interventions were raised. Mm -hmm. That fall after we did the presentations, there was just under 1,000. Oh. that were raised so definitely caught on mm -hmm. and then there were almost 1500 raised in the spring and we think that we're probably at about the max mm -hmm. we have some goals as far as the number of faculty we want uh, using the system mm -hmm. um, and that has increased and so we've met, met those goals so i would say there's definite buy-in and when we were a little bit late getting up and running we we got emails so faculty <laughs> were looking to get in and the great part was on week two they were really ready to get in there and say you know, so-and-so's not showing up for class. And again, it can be a variety mm -hmm. of things. We've met students uh, in different locations and, you know, just walked them over to financial aid or walked them over to the registrar's office to work out just issues mm -hmm. that they have that, um, you know, when you're a, a freshman and sophomore, what seems like a major, major issue in your life is something that you just, eh, you know, as a senior, you know, uh -huh. it's just a little roadblock that you hit. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's getting everyone past those obstacles. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, the, the older we get, the more we realize what's important and what matters and, you know, what, what impacts our life, but where our goals should be and what we have to work and for. And the intervention can help in that Definitely. process, can yes. it? What's Dr. King's story with the Fort Hayes State University? How many years now? Uh, 21 years. A lot so, of uh, hats have been worn over that time, too. Didn't yeah, it? I actually uh, came here from uh, Wisconsin, grew up and worked in uh, video production, uh, worked at a news <laughs> station uh, after getting uh, my degree um, up in Wisconsin, and uh, but then came here in 96. I like to tell everybody I was actually at teaching at UW Platteville um, in 1995 where they went undefeated and won the, or it won the national championship and then came here in 1996 where we went undefeated and won the national <laughs> right. championship and so you know I, I like to say maybe I'm the only one that has ever had that uh -huh. um, but I came down here um, video production was what I initially came into our Center for Teaching Excellence and Learning Technologies um, was able to, to teach and work on some things over in uh, Heather Hall at the time mm -hmm. uh, now Hammond Hall as, as changes have happened and all the construction on campus um, moved up from there to director of that technology center and then into the virtual college for 12 years as director mm -hmm. there and now the last two in this position and it's uh, you know it's it's a, it's a great university I mean I, as somebody who's been at a few different universities to be here 21 years great university it's a great community um, you know thrilled to have this opportunity thrilled they keep me around well you know we're gonna have to have you back because this virtual college has been a literal explosion at Fort Hayes State University and you were there in the core of it so let's do this again. That sounds great. Dr. Dennis King, uh, Fort Hayes State Assistant Vice President for Student Affairs in charge of enrollment management and retention, our community connection. 
Hi, I'm Jeremy McGuire. I'm an account executive with Eagle Marketing Solutions. On a typical day, I'll come in and I'll check my calendar, check my appointments, prep all my stuff for those appointments, and then look at who else I can help out, and then I start my day. Clients want to know that you are there for them, even if you're just checking in and saying, hey, and how are things going? What I enjoy most about my job is the people, not only the people that I work with here at Eagle Communications, but also the people that I get to work with out in the community and find marketing solutions that work for them. Don't miss the Green and Growing show in the noon to 9 p.m. hours on Eagle TV. Ellis County Horticulture agent Holly Dickman will identify common lawn and garden issues while providing up-to-date information. Watch weekdays in the noon to 9 p.m. hours on Channel 14 or 614. Green and Growing, brought to you by Riedel's Garden Center, a full-service garden center west of Hayes on Highway 40 and Eagle TV. Welcome again to our Community Connection as we come back uh, to our Eagle Communication Studios with uh, director and editor of our series, Brandon Cooley. The Hayes Symphony Orchestra begins a brand new season with the first concert, the opening gala concert, at 7.30, Saturday, September 30th at the Beach Mitt Performing Arts Center. And the Hayes Symphony Orchestra Publicity Coordinator joins us Kathy Drabkin as our community connection. This season's the third in the cycle that uh, the director, uh, Dr. Shatikoff, has put together, right, Kathy? Right, so when he first came to town and became a conductor of the symphony, he had this uh, unusual idea of doing a three-year theme uh, of music. So the first year was German music, the second was Russian, and then the third was American, sort of mirroring the Hayes Volga German immigrant experience here in Hayes, and it's been a, a very popular idea. And once again, the opening will feature uh, American uh, music. All American music. We're going to be performing uh, works by Aaron Copeland, his uh, Appalachian Spring, uh, The Lincoln Portrait, uh, Fanfare for a Common Man, all of which are sort of um, really essentially American sounding music. You, you get ideas of vistas and pioneers crossing the, the, the plains uh, when you listen to this kind of music. Uh, we're also going to be performing Leonard Bernstein's Candide Overture and then uh, The Stars and Stripes Forever by John Philip Sousa, which is a toe-tapping, <laughs> hand-rousing type of uh, finale. So. And most of this by concert standards is pretty recent. 1942 was the right. implementation of yeah. Copeland's work. Right. So a lot of our music was written in the 1940s and really sort of an artistic response to World War II. So um, we're going to be focusing a little bit on that uh, in our pre-concert activities as well uh, and just sort of uh, yeah, focusing on World War II and, and music that was written during then. And once again this year, Hayes Symphony uh, uh, is absolutely free thanks to support of the uh, patrons and uh, much of that uh, thanks to the uh, opening gala will also include a whole lot more than just music, Kathy. It's right. quite, it's a total experience. It is. Uh, we've been very fortunate in our sponsorship with the concert uh, by Auto World mm. uh, for this season or this concert um, and we have a host of sort of ancillary activities that go along with the concert. So not only will you have uh, a rousing music to listen to, uh, but there's a pre-concert talk by Dr. Paul Laird from KU. He'll be focusing on the American sound of music. Uh, we have a kids music exploration room where kids can find out what exactly is a fanfare and get their picture taken with Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> um, we have a uh, American as apple pie pie auction uh, as a part of a, a fundraiser for the symphony but also uh, an opportunity to sort of just have fun uh, with with uh, local bakers here in town providing that. One of whom um, is Kathy's bread. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, let's see what else do we have going on? Um, well, there's a display of uh, oh, right. memorabilia from yeah. the uh, Ellis County Historical right. Society. Right, that'll be very interesting. So the Ellis County Historical Society is pre presenting a Hayes on the home front type of display. So what was going on here in Hayes while our boys were across the, the sea. We should mention too that 
uh, the auction will be a benefit for the symphony. Right, so we will have 12 different pies uh, and a silent bidding that uh, people can bid on before the concert starts and during intermission and then we'll announce winners right before our last piece. And we should mention too that uh, uh, there is also the input for Worth uh, Wealth Management as well for the post-concert reception right, which takes right, place. Right, right, right. We've been very fortunate in, in our community support uh, of our efforts. Now, tickets. Uh, you do need a ticket. They're free, but right. how do we get them? Uh, there are several ways. You can go to the Hayes Convention Visitors Bureau and pick up tickets there anytime between now and the concert. Um, also, there will be tickets at the door mm -hmm. uh, available starting uh, probably around 6.30. Uh, or if you want to get yours in advance, uh, you can contact us at Hayes Symphony at fhsu.edu. Just email us, say, I want five tickets. We'll send you a voucher, and mm -hmm. then you can turn that in at the door. The... Uh, program of Appalachian Spring, uh, Lincoln Portrait and such. Mm -hmm. um, how's that from a cellist point of view for, uh, for difficulty? Oh, you know, um, it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> There are some tri tricky spots, um, a lot of hopping around, uh -huh. um, uh, but it's such uh, sort of boisterous music to play that mm -hmm. uh, you're willing to put in a, a few extra hours of woodshedding to make it work kind of a reflection of the big, bold country during that period of time, isn't yes. it, Kathy? Yes, yeah, yeah. And, and you know, the, the three Copeland pieces, they're, they're very different. So Appalachian Spring is sort of folksy. You'll hear some, uh, uh, the shaker tune, the simple gifts. You'll mm -hmm. hear camp town races, I mean, sort of folk tunes. Um, the, common, uh, the common man fanfare is much more brassy and bold, mm -hmm. sort of images of mountains in the background. Mm. Um, the Lincoln Portrait is, um, is much more solemn, uh, and it actually involves mm -hmm. words of Lincoln from his letters in the Gettysburg mm -hmm. Address incorporated into the music, and those will be narrated by Brenda Mater. Wanted to mention, too, I'm glad yeah. you mentioned Brenda's name, because uh, Ruth Firestone, who is a music mm -hmm. supporter and uh, writes uh, wonderful uh, post-music mm -hmm. uh, reviews and such, said this about Brenda. Narrator for the portrait, Brenda Mater, head of the Hayes Arts Council and a heroic figure in her own right. In the years since funds for the arts dried up, she has used her enormous talents as an actor, director, administrator, fundraiser, and gallery keeper to keep Hayes in the spotlight as a center for the arts. Absolutely. And I couldn't agree more. Absolutely. So. And, and she supports all forms of art. So All yeah. forms, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, now that's the opening gala. But that's just the beginning of the seven, isn't it, Right, Kathy? so there's seven concerts this season, uh, and they, there are a wide variety of types and styles of music. So we have full symphonic music. We also have concerts that are very small and intimate. There may only be six or eight players up on stage. Uh, we have um, jazz music at our Valentine's concert. We have uh, uh, our final concert involves using Fort Hayes Choir uh, mm -hmm. on stage with us. And we also have a very special children's Halloween concert. And that last year was the first year, I believe, yes, that that happened. Yeah. And Beach Schmidt Auditorium was packed. It was. And <laughs> it was joyous to see yeah. and experience the whole thing, Kathy. Yeah. It was amazing, yeah. and it's coming back. Yes, yes. We, um, uh, we're sort of hoping to capitalize on the success of that Peter and the Wolf uh, performance. This year, we were fortunate enough to get a grant from the Dane uh, G. Hansen Foundation through the Heartland Community Foundation, mm -hmm. and uh, they have a, that has allowed us to hire a local playwright, uh, Catherine Trishman, uh, who, who has a national reputation for, mm -hmm. for plays. And uh, she has written a musical drama for us that is sort of based loosely on Shakespeare's Midsummer's Night Dream. It'll involve adult actors, kids actors, and the whole drama is musically illustrated by the, the symphony. So it'll be a, a blast. Uh, Sunday, October 29, if you want to mark your calendar, a 3.30 in the afternoon performance a Fairy Hallows Eve, an original music drama. Catherine Teshman has done that work. And this is going to be a real treat. Again, children in costume, right. as well as the overall experience of adults and children right. on stage. Right, and, and lots of opportunities for kids to get their hands on musical instruments mm -hmm. with our instrument petting zoo, and there'll be arts and crafts activities, story hours. So it's a, it's a real afternoon event. 
and a couple of more before the end of the year. Touch on the new music festival, if you would, Kathy, uh, November 4th at 7.30. Sure, that is a, uh, a this is the first time that uh, that has been offered, and that is being organized by Dr. Kristen Pisano, who is the uh, clarinet saxophone instructor at Fort Hayes, and it will focus uh, on mu uh, music by composers who are still living. Mm -hmm. We play a lot of dead composers, so <laughs> <laughs> it should be very interesting music to, to listen to. Yeah. And finally, uh, for this semester at least, Wrapping up the Winter Vespers concert. This will be a change in location. Note uh, Saturday, se uh, December 2nd, 7.30 p.m. The location will be the St. Joseph Catholic Church in Hayes. Right, and that music will be much more introspective and calm, uh, almost spiritual. Mm -hmm. That's it's sort of why we're hosting it in a, in a church and mm -hmm. it has that Vespers feel to it. We thought it would be a good way for people to sort of relax and take a breath before mm -hmm. the holidays mm -hmm. start. Yeah. Tell me about the Hayes Symphony. Who makes up the players? Yeah, so the Hayes Symphony is sort of an, a unique collaborative group uh, on campus. Um, we were established in 1914, so we're one of the oldest ensembles in the state. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, we're made up of Fort Hayes students and Fort Hayes faculty and staff. And our conductor is, is drawn from the music faculty. But we're also made up of community musicians who maybe began playing in, an instrument as a child and want to continue uh, uh, keeping active in that. Uh, we're made up of music teachers from around uh, USD 489 and even further out, orchestra and band t instructors. Uh, and then we also sometimes bring in people from further afield out in Kansas, uh, paid musicians, mm -hmm. who help fill out our ranks. So it's, a, a, I think, a, a unique collaborative group that uh, really draws in uh, on strengths throughout the community. And rehearsals are usually uh, what, uh, how often? Uh, we have intense rehearsals two weeks before each concert, so mm -hmm. they'll be like two uh, a week or three a week uh, until right before the concert. So. What got you started in music? Oh, that's a long story. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Here's the short version. Okay. I was a very domineering li uh, older sister. Uh -huh. uh, and at the age of, I don't know, three or so, my folks were worried about my younger brother who was not learning to talk because I was speaking for him. <laughs> and so... Well, uh, that's what older sisters do. Right. They I, dominate. Yeah, you know? yeah, I was the little mother. And so uh, at some point, my folks decided uh, that he, my brother, needed something to do that was just strictly his own. Uh -huh. And they had a friend who taught Suzuki method violin, mm -hmm. which is for very young children. So they started him on the violin. Well, of course, I was like, well, what about me, you know? <laughs> so they wisely decided that I would play the cello. So uh -huh. a different instrument, but still music. Uh, and my, my brother is actually a professional violinist to, to mm -hmm. this day, and I kept it as a, an amateur avocation. And who knows how many children started with the Suzuki method yes. and progressed to really enjoying playing. Yeah, yeah, you know, just because you start young doesn't mean that you're gonna become a professional musician, but it's certainly something that can follow you through mm -hmm. life. And it's the kind of activity, unlike maybe playing football or something, that, you know, it's easier on your body so that mm -hmm. when you're 50 or 70, mm -hmm. you know, you can still play. You could join the Hayes Symphony, exactly, for example. Exactly, yeah. And the, the idea of music itself, as a musician, what does it bring to you? What do you get from it? Because oh. I want you to tell parents how important music is in schools and in mm. children's lives. What, it, what does it do for you? Well, I, you know, there's so many levels of answer to that question. Um, Part of it is just uh, developing skills and abilities. Mm -hmm. So you can, uh, uh, through you know, just physical manipulation and, and practice and determination and really close listening, create beauty. Mm -hmm. I mean, and do some things that, that you know, are, are, are unusual. And um, it requires hand-mind coordination. Exactly, yes. Uh -huh. And it requires a, a good bit of discipline um, and, and breaking th things down into small little chunks. Mm -hmm. But then there's sort of the whole emotional side uh, mm -hmm. that, you know, music brings beauty and joy and, mm -hmm. and, and ways of expressing ideas that really can't be expressed in words, mm -hmm. you know? So, uh, uh, and, and friendships. Uh, mm -hmm. My husband and I have played for many, many years, and we have friends that we left back in Virginia 30 years ago mm -hmm. that we still go and visit and play string quartets with because that's an automatic connection that yeah. you can have with, with people. 
and you can still do it yes. through the years as yes. you progress to other areas yes. of interest, perhaps. Yeah. You always have music as the core. Yeah, yeah. And, it, you know, it's sort of interesting about the symphony community members. You know, of course, we have all our professionals and our, our faculty, but when you look up on stage, it's sort of exciting to see there's Art. He's the pharmacist at Dillon's. And, and there's Joan. She used to be the public health nurse. Mm -hmm. And there's Mel. He's the, the lawyer who happens to play flute. So, I mean, there's a real connection that this is a, a larger than just music, but it, it really incorporates our community. The opening gala from the Hayes Symphony Orchestra as they begin the season of 2017-18 with the opening gala Saturday, September 30th, 7.30 p.m., an all-American program with the works of Aaron Copeland and Leonard Bernstein and Brenda Mater from the Hayes Arts Council narrating the Lincoln Portrait. Tickets are available at the Hayes Convention and Visitors Bureau and also available at uh, 30 minutes before at the Beach Mitt Performing Arts Center. Or you can get tickets online at Fort Hayes State University, FHSU, and Hayes Symphony. Our guest, Hayes Symphony Orchestra Publicity Coordinator and Hayes Symphony Cellist, Kathy Drabkin, our community connection. Are you frustrated with Wi-Fi dead zones in your home? It happens when you don't have Boost, the cutting edge Wi-Fi solution from Eagle Communications. A Boost certified Eagle technician maps your home, then installs a dual band modem and router, plus discrete access points to deliver wall-to-wall -wall Wi-Fi with no dead zones. Boost powers all your family's devices in all the places you love to live. Get Boost, Wi-Fi made simple, only from Eagle Communications. Call today.